I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, and we'll focus on verses 23 through 28. He also said, I assure you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. But I say to you, there were certainly many widows in Israel in Elijah's days when the sky was shut up for three years and six months while a great famine came over all of the land. And yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. And in the prophet Elijah's time, there were many in Israel who had serious skin diseases, yet not one of them was healed, only Naaman the Syrian. And when they heard this, everyone in the synagogue was enraged. You know, many Christians believe that it was Jesus' messianic claim, I'm the Messiah, that enraged the members of his hometown synagogue. And although the people of Nazareth did reject Jesus as the Messiah, their rage mainly was in response to Jesus' reminder that in days past, God had blessed faithful Gentiles over unfaithful Israelites. Jesus cites two familiar instances from Israel's prophetic heroes, and the first was a story of a widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings chapter 17. You see, in response to Israel's king Ahab and his queen Jezebel's idolatry, Elijah pronounced a three and a half year drought. Since the drought brought famine to the entire nation of Israel and the surrounding regions, well, then it signified that the vast majority of Israel's citizens had followed Ahab and Jezreel into idolatry. Now, with famine comes death, and with death comes widows and orphans. Instead of hearing Israel's pleas for mercy, God sent Elijah to a Gentile widow and to her son. You see, the Lord provided miraculously for them because their faith surpassed that of those in Israel. Meanwhile, Israel suffered in unbelief. The story of Naaman the Syrian is found in 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman was the Syrian army commander. At that time, Syria was Israel's most dreaded enemy, and Naaman was a powerful man, powerful man of war, and yet he had leprosy. To an Israelite, the only thing worse than a Syrian would have been a Syrian with leprosy. So Naaman's Jewish slave girl told him that Adonai, that is the Lord, could heal him. And this led Naaman to Elisha's front door. Because of the Gentiles' faith, he was healed. Meanwhile, Israel's king had responded in fear, doubting that God would heal Naaman, symbolic of Israel's unbelief in the word of the Lord. So while the Gentile was cured, no Israelite was healed at that time. With his statement, this particular statement, in his hometown synagogue, Jesus was revealing not only that he is the Messiah, but he also revealed that the Jewish prejudice against the Gentiles was wrong, that God holds no such prejudice for anyone who would believe in him by faith. Therefore, he would give to them by his grace the thing which they sought after. Now, by invoking these images from Israel's history, Jesus was essentially saying that Israel's present Roman oppression was due to Israel's sin. Jesus was also exhorting that until the people repented from their sin, God would continue to overlook their unrepentance in favor of Gentiles who would by faith believe. You know, even today... By His grace, God has chosen to save Gentiles who put their faith in the Messiah, Jesus. And in some way, that acts to provoke Israel to jealousy so that Israel would by faith believe in Him and also receive salvation. You can find more about that in Romans chapter 10, verse 19. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at www.groundworksministries.com.